Welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 225. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Erica Cat. Sup, guys? How's it going? Hey, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good. What about yourself, Norman? I'm good, I'm good. Um, did a lot of pokey hunting today. <laughs> uh, <gasps> what did you get, Norman? Uh, I got a Rhyhorn, Dratini, <laughs> uh, Magikarp. Psyduck, Golduck. Not the Magikarp! <laughs> Nitus! <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. And I became a gym leader or gym person <gasps> just for a few seconds. And then I got took down. Like, on Still the- counts. Still <laughs> counts. Yeah. Now I was a gym leader for all of a few seconds. Yep. He was still a gym leader, people. <laughs> Give him your respect. Uh, but you were a gym leader too, right? For all of a few seconds. Yay. But I still demand respect. <laughs> Yeah, but how was your day? Oh, my day was good. It was quite exhausting, but it was good. Yeah. No poker hunting for me, though. Yeah, I, I want Rhyhorn. <laughs> I, I think Rhyhorn will come to you, right? Like what you're in your. I, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. He came to me once, and he just went, "All right, bye," and then I never saw him again. And now forever alone. Oh, I don't think so. I'm, I'm sure Rhyhorn will come. But funny story you mentioned about Pokemon going away. On the way home, I was in my friend's car he was driving and I got his phone out like you know just to go to Pokestops and just um, swipe and get those items and there was a silhouette near the Poke radar thingy and hey what's this silhouette and we saw Dragonite <gasps> yeah Dragonite's appearing an awful lot more I'm seeing I'm seeing people getting posts going oh look at this fellow that I found everyone's finding all these cool Pokemon what do I get Magnemites and Voltorbs <laughs> And the occasional, the occasional Rattata and Spiro. <laughs> Rattata, I got that all the time. And um, when coming close to my house, we saw a silhouette of a Snorlax. Oh, Snorlax! It's nice! Like, what the hell's going on? I caught a Snorlax, they're cool. Just Yay. randomly saw one in the street and was like, oh, Mine! <laughs> awesome, awesome. But this week, we're not going to do the Pokemon show. This is still the Pony show. <laughs> You started it, Norman. I know, I know. My, you always start it. I know, my open bad. Open cans of worms you need not to open. Hey, it's a fun conversation piece. But uh, on this week's episode, it's going to be a bit different because we had guests on. Ooh. They're your average Joe and Jenabun from, well, Button Mesh and Sweetie Bell Plays. We interviewed them earlier on and past me has interviewed them. So... Uh, probably I'll put it in later. I I don't know. I think we should do news first before we hand it off to pass me to talk about them. What do you think? Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. Or we can sit and wait for the empty silence for now you will hear past Norman interview people. Hello, guys. This is a bit different from your usual time, but... We're recording this in the past or future. I don't know how we're going to put this. So, this is the interview section for your average Joe and Jenna Bun. Hi. Hello. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Tired. <laughs> yeah, tired. Same. Only got an hour of sleep, but you know. Yeah, I got more than you. I'm still tired. <laughs> Thank you for coming on this early because uh, we tried to cater to your time, which was about 12, but somehow that didn't manage. Someone was asleep. <laughs> yeah. Hence, hence, nudge, nudge, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but now that you guys are here, I need to ask you the four important questions. And first question is, who's your favorite character? Go ahead, Jenna. Okay. Pinkie Pie, definitely, because... I feel like I really represent Pinkie Pie a lot because I like I know this may sound cheesy, but I do love like making others smile and making others laugh. Oh, that's awesome! Like having that feeling of making other people smile—that's good. Yeah, I just I love that feeling when someone smiles and just like yay. <laughs> and you, Joe? I'd say it's a pretty basic tie between uh, Pinkie and Fluttershy. I thought it was I, Rainbow Dash. It used to be Rainbow Dash. But recently, (laughs) (laughs) it doesn't stay the same all the time. It literally flips. It flips like it flips like every week. Oh, (laughs) but like if I were to actually have like one, like they're both like related to me a lot because here's the thing: one, I do agree with the fact that 
pinky, you know, I do like making people smile, like doing stuff that I do on YouTube here. And the reason I like Fluttershy is because in actual real life, if I go out and do stuff, I am an extremely shy person. Same. Same here. <laughs> That's why she's my second favorite. <laughs> I can really. I, I think we all here love the Fluttershy's. Yay. Oh, she's adorable. I, I love know. her. She will kill you. <laughs> She, yeah. Yes. She, if you go in her shed, she'll kill you. Yeah, and with her cuteness. Oh yeah. Yep. Too. So yay, we, we all can agree that the shy is the best pwn. Yay. <laughs> so favorite episode? I don't know. Like, I really like all the Pinkie Pie episodes. Like, not just because she's best pony, but <laughs> I really liked Party of One. That episode was really good. Party of One. <laughs> Six years ago, and that still holds up. Yep. And it still gives me nightmares to today. Crazy <laughs> Pinky's best Pinky. <laughs> this is very true. Yep. I had a crazy toilet more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> crazy toilet is much fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Time is ticking. <laughs> yep. I can't find a friendship problem. I'll make a friendship problem. <laughs> oh, no. So, Joe, what about you? Um, I'd have to say my favorite episode would probably be the two part of the Return of Harmony. Hmm, Return of Harmony. That's season one, right? Um, it's the beginning of season two with Discord. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. that one's good too. Shows me what I know about the naming conventions. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only, that's the only episode name I can really name off. Mm. Because it's my favorite one. <laughs> like if you ask me any other ones, I, I don't know what it's called. I know there was a pony in, in it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same though. I cannot remember the episode titles except like party of one. Yeah, you you just remember it. the one that you like. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right. So, number 3 is how did you become a fan of the show? Well, I was actually a fan in uh, the earlier generations when I was a little girl. And yes, I know I'm still little. You don't. <laughs> yes, you are very short. <laughs> but um it was like i think when i was like maybe five or six um i still actually have them you know those g3 oh, uh, little God. like toys of the ponies mm -hmm. i have like a hundred of them in my room and i still have them and um i used to love like watching like the my little pony g3 movies and i had a video game oh. where there was like yeah i had a lot of the video games from it i had the toys and i had everything i was like a My Little Pony G3 fanatic when I was little. So when G4 came out, I'm just like, I was a bit older, so I'm just like, I mean, it's the cartoon, and I like cartoons, so I guess I'll <laughs> give it a try. And I watched the first episode, and I'm just like, oh, this is really good, actually. I like this. And then right after that, I just became like a mega, mega, mega brony. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Conventions, here we come! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Extreme Ultra Brony Mode activated. Basically, yeah. It's oh. like, once upon a time, a land of a question, brony. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much sums up every fan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joe, what about you? This, this might take a bit. Do you want, do you want the good version or do you want the short version? <laughs> oh, the good version. It's always. The good version. Okay. Here um, we go. <laughs> all right. So there was three things that mainly got me into, um, the MLP show. Like, okay, this, the three things were Markiplier, the YouTuber, my cousin, and John Delancey. So I remember a while back, um, I was playing a game of Call of Duty with my cousin. I was over at his house and, uh, we were just kind of like, you know, playing a few matches here. It was like Black Ops or whatever on Nuketown. And then we just kind of got bored after a while. Um, so he flipped it off, turned it back onto the normal TV, and what was on the normal TV was one of the episodes. And I, if I remember correctly, it was Dragon Shy, and my cousin just kind of turns to me and he goes, hey, we should watch this. He kind of said that jokingly, and of course my first reaction was, hell no. <laughs> I ain't gonna watch that. That's not a word! <laughs> So then it just kind of went after a while. It kind of stuck in my head a little bit, but I'm just like, eh, you know, I don't, this, this is just my little pony. It's always been crap and stuff, uh, throughout the generations and stuff, in my opinion. And I was watching Markiplier, a bunch of his videos and stuff, and he was doing a let's play at the time of SCP containment breach, but there was a My Little Pony mod for that, which is extremely scary when Pinkie Pie is just randomly coming around trying to kill you. 
Cause you know, you know, you know when they put the whole, like, like, toddler kid stuff, and they put that into horror films, it yeah. just amplifies horror films by like 20,000. <laughs> so it's, it's scary as 20%? hell. 20%? It's yeah, <laughs> yes, 20, 20% scarier. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, I was kind of like, okay, this is kind of weird and stuff. So then the third thing that kind of really just pushed me over to you guys to actually try and watching an episode was I'm a big Star Trek fan. Um, my dad got me into it a while ago. I, I've collected, like, all the movies and stuff. I watched pretty much all of the series except for a few of them. Um, and my favorite character out of the entire Star Trek universe is Q, who is obviously played by John Delancey. So I was on his um, actual website, just kind of like looking around and stuff. I was bored one day. I was looking up Star Trek stuff. And down in the corner, there was a little link. There was a little colorful link that caught my eye, and it was to the BronyCon documentary that he had made about two or three years ago now. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird. And I saw that he played a character in there, and I'm like, oh, it's on My Little Pony and stuff. But it's John Delancey. Mm, I might as well see what he did in there. It might be really funny or something. You know? So I clicked on it. Uh, it was Return of Harmony. So it's like the first episode I ever seen of the entire show. I I watched it. I watched the second part. I'm like, you know what? He is exactly like you. The character is exactly like you. That was awesome. That was, it was pretty cool. So then I I went back. I'm like, I'm going to see where this all started. So I went to the first episode and the second episode and the third episode <laughs> The fourth episode <laughs> until I hit about maybe the eighth or ninth episode, and I was just kind of like, "That's not a word. I'm a brony. <laughs> I actually like this." Oh no! <laughs> and, and at the time too, I didn't know what the fandom was or anything. I didn't even know there was a fandom, even though I saw that link on the page. It just kind of completely like flew over my head, and then. Of course, I, I made fun of my cousin for sort of liking the show because I knew he liked it at the time. So then when I liked it, it was kind of an awkward moment when I had to tell him that I liked the show. <laughs> hey, by the way. Um, I know I, I know I was kind of picking on you about the entire show and stuff, but, you know, I think I kind of sort of... Yeah, I really like it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's my story on that, how I became a brownie. Yeah. Good story. Good story. So talking about family members, what do they think? So Joe, you said cousin. <laughs> you want me to start on this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, his first initial reaction was um he kinda he kinda laughed and he's like, Oh my gosh, for some reason I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, I've had the weirdest interest when I was younger. I used to collect pennies and stuff and um, I was majorly into like history and a lot more than what a lot of the like kids my age were. And <laughs> he kind of picked on me for a while for that. And, um, for the longest time, I was kind of afraid to like tell anyone like my family or anyone. Cause you know, I, I, I didn't know what they were going to say about that. But then eventually one day I told my mom, my mom was like, eh, you know, it's, it's better than that gears of war you've been playing. <laughs> <laughs> And then one of my best friends, who I've known since second grade, I still know him, he's a pretty good friend of mine. I went up to him, like, one day I was wearing a shirt. I finally, like, wore a shirt somewhere. Um, it was, like, a Doctor Who shirt. And he looks at me, and and I'm like, yeah, I know, I like the show and stuff. And he goes, Joe, this isn't surprising. <laughs> <laughs> so every everybody uh, who's my friend and stuff has been pretty accepting of it. They don't think I'm crazy. Well, they think I'm crazy, but it's in a good way. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. Do you know? Well, when I liked it, my mom, she was like, oh, my gosh, that's so cute. <laughs> and then, like, I got her to watch it, and she's not that into cartoons. So she's like, it's cute. I mean, it's cute for little girls and stuff. And um, I actually went to my first BronyCon this year. And when she went, and then we were walking home, well, not walking home, but we were on our way home, I'm just like, so, what's your opinion on bronies now? And she's just like, I love bronies now! Because <laughs> she met a lot of them, so, like, her take on bronies went from, like, bad to, like, really, really good. Like, she loves bronies now, like, a lot. Wow. Um, yeah. And I'm just, yay! And my dad, I told him, and... <laughs> I think his reaction 
was kind of like cool. Like I don't know, he he's not very like dramatic, but he always like goes up to me and he like teases me like, "Oh, I'm twenty percent cooler, Jenny." <laughs> oh. Oh, <God. laughs> and like he does like this Rainbow Dash impression where he's like, "I'm twenty percent cooler." And it's just oh my god, it's so funny. <laughs> My sister, though, she thinks it's a bit weird, like, because she's very, um, she's, like, very sporty and a tomboy Mm. and very popular, and she's kind of, like, the opposite of me. So she's, like, eh, I mean, she doesn't like the show, like, at all. She kind of, she kind of hates it because, um, she's always telling me to shut up when I'm voice acting, (laughs) because it gets annoying, because, like, I'm in the kitchen where my computer is, I'm in the kitchen, so Mm. you can hear everything. But, I mean, she's okay with it. Like, she's not like, oh, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> but she's cool with it. And my best friend, Jay, who I consider a sister, I've known her for, like, three years. I showed her the show, and I tried converting her into a brony. <laughs> and <laughs> she says she's not a brony, but she likes the show. She enjoys watching the show. So I'm just like, we're almost there. We're almost there. We'll get to that. <laughs> she enjoys calling me Kathy. <laughs> yeah, she enjoys calling him Kathy. <laughs> Any reason why? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, probably because Cup of Joe. Yeah. And then like, she thinks of coffee, and then she pronounced it like Kathy, so now it's just a thing, I guess. I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> yep. If I tell her I talked to you today, she's going to be like, oh, you talked to Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for answering those four questions, guys. Like, we learned more about you than ever, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I rambled, but I have a problem with rambling. <laughs> nah, it's all good. That means we don't have any awkward silence. Insert awkward silence now. It's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but still, um, the reason why you're here is, well, you guys do something. And that something is on the YouTubes, right? Yes. Yes, we do a thing. <laughs> I would I would hope it's on YouTube. I otherwise, I don't know where it's going. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Vimeo. <laughs> Vimeo, yes. Vimeo. <laughs> Daily motion. Yeah, that's a thing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But still, if you guys don't mind, um, could you just tell the people at home what you do? What I do a lot of my channels or on my channel is just kind of all over the place. I've never <laughs> really had a direction of where I was going. Like my original idea when I first started YouTube was to make gameplay videos. I wanted to be like Markiplier, you know, like PewDiePie, that kind of stuff. I wanted to get out there by playing games generically and stuff. And then I kind of went into reaction videos for a phase. Um, But then those just kind of got unpopular at a point. So I stopped doing those. Um, And I just kind of experimented, went around. I did some skit stuff. um, And now I'm just kind of turned it back around and went to gaming again. Basically now we're doing the Button Mash and Sweetie Ball series, which I'm mainly focusing on and, putting a lot of effort into it. And actually, since I've been doing those videos, I've actually been putting a lot more effort into my uh, other gameplay videos and stuff, too. I literally sit down and spend hours editing each of the videos just to make them look nice. Awesome, awesome. And Jenna, you? Well, my channel in general, it's basically um, consists of comic dubs, covers, and a bunch of random stuff, too. I don't really have, like, a general theme for my channel, I guess. I kind of just upload what I feel like uploading. To define it, it's basically comic dubs, covers, and etc. I play Sweetie Belle in the Sweet Bell and Bell Mesh Play series, and I sometimes do redirects, but I've been forgetting to do redirects. <laughs> <laughs> so they, uh, they haven't been updated in a while. <laughs> it's okay. We all forget to redirect stuff. Yep. <laughs> so the whole idea for the button mesh thing, where did it came from? Um, <laughs> that was actually it, it was sort of a joke. Yeah. Um, two a.m. Because yeah, it, it started it started really late. Well, the funny thing is, like beforehand, I had not really done any voices before. I didn't think I could do any voices before because <laughs> I never, I, like I said, I really, I really didn't experiment. You know, I, I have. Try like Sora and Big Mac and that kind of stuff. Try to imitate their voices and stuff. Um, but I could never get it down. And every time I tried doing an impression in front of another person, they'd be all like, mm, "You're not gonna get hired by me." Oh, <laughs> that's, not, that's not nice. 
Um, but then I tried doing a silly voice, a high pitch voice, doing sort of like Button, and I think Jenna, I think at one point you're just kind of like, wow, that that kind of sounds like Button. Yeah, yeah. It's just like you think you can do Button, you can do Button, man. Just practice. Like okay, fine. And then it was like. 2 a.m. in the morning when we were all like, or I was like, we were playing Roblox and I'm like, you know what, you want to record something like, you know, like, you know, like a button match and Sweetie Belle thing. I mean, you, you do like a bunch of voices and I do whatever I do and, <laughs> and then, and then I'm like, oh, you know, we could just be like pretend that we're being the two gamer ponies and, and then, uh, Jenna was like, yeah, sure. And then I said, yeah, well, you know those uh, videos that Vandermelon makes, the Fluttershy Let's Plays, and, uh, you know, maybe we could try to make something like that, but what button mesh and Sweetie Bell. And then we recorded the first episode, basically shenanigans and stuff, the random improv, <laughs> we just did that first time, and I spent a good five to seven hours editing the very first episode. Um, because I had to create all the webcams and I had to go back and edit the entire thing and then put all the webcams to each to try to tailor to what we sounded like, the yep. music, the outro, everything. All that fun stuff. All, all the fun <laughs> stuff. And I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. I honestly thought that people were going to look at it and go, oh, wow, this is the crappiest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> It's these two weirdos, especially that Joe guy, thinking he can voice a button. Oh, shut <laughs> <God. laughs> And uh, then from there, uh, a first episode got a pretty, you know, good reception. And then uh, the second one got a good one. And I'm like, you know what? Why don't we just make a series out of this? So then from there, we just kind of like every once in a while, we're just like, hey, you want to play a game? All right, let's do this. We're about to mention this video thing. So we just kind of record one a week, put one up a week, and that's where we're at. Yeah, and your first video almost um, hitting 23,000? Uh, three of them have hit over 20,000 so far. Yeah, and your first one is almost getting 23. It's like um, mm-hmm. on 22.977. So yeah, you're almost there. So wow, that's a huge idea like what three months ago yep about three yeah, months about. ago now i yeah it's kind of crazy how big it exploded well i mean like i, I was not expecting it at all <laughs> i mean like i was i was looking at it when when uh when i put the first episode up because i'm thinking you know uh three years ago was when the jan animations uh you know buttons adventure came out mm-hmm. and since the whole C D thing happened and um, there was just kind of this void that had never been filled throughout that entire time because, you know, there was no button stuff really coming out. Like, there was people out there doing, like, random stuff. Um, but I, I guess, like, it's like, our, you know, we were going to try something and put it out there and maybe we can continue it in a different direction, which, you know, I'm kind of staying true to that same character that they created. You know, I, I like to give, like, Pretty much all the credit to, you know, Shady Box and uh, Jan Animations for, you know, obviously coming up with the character and stuff. Um, and I basically take the big inspiration from them to uh, put into this character and into this series. So, mm, All right. So basically you just carry over what they did. Mm-hmm. If I did remember right, they didn't really flush out button mash that much. So did you kind of took inspiration on your personal views in gaming or not? You could say that Button and Sweetie are basically <laughs> us. Yeah, because, um, like, if me and Joe were in a call, we basically bicker just like them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we, we, basically, you could say that both of the characters are us with their voices. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And Jenna, Sweetie Belle, like, how did that pop up? How did that go? I think I was just, like... If Button had a gaming partner, I think we were just like, I feel like it'd be Sweetie Belle. Because there's a lot of stuff, like, if you see something with Button that someone created, sometimes, like, it has Sweetie Belle in it. If there's, like, a certain person that's going to be with Button in something. I could already do a Sweetie Belle voice, but I couldn't do it that well at the time. So it sounded it sounded very low when I haven't practiced it. But after practicing it for a while each episode, I started to get better. Like, if you go from the first episode 
to like the latest episode, as Joe said a while back to me, there's like a big difference between our voices. So I think it also helped with like voice acting experience and such. Helped a lot with improv. Yeah. The, yeah. So I was going to mention, um, it helped a lot with improv because each time we like, we play a game, it's all improvised. Each episode, I feel like the improv slightly gets better because oh, yeah. of <laughs> us doing it more. <laughs> All right. So I've been wondering because when you mentioned the improv file, that's off the cuff. You just, the first thing that pops out is the first thing you say. But do you script a bit or no, none at all? No. It's not, not it's not scripted. No. <laughs> so no, not a teensy bit of scripting there. Like, okay, at this scene, we should do this. So, nope. so you go in. <laughs> no, it's, it's literally, it's literally the raw footage. We sit down and we record for, Anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes and whatever comes out of our mouths is pretty much what's going to go up. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> oh, nice. I was just wondering, you mentioned about practice and you improve the voices with practice. Just wondering, uh, do you do offhand practice sessions? Like um, when you're not playing the game, you randomly um, practice the voices? Yes. Yes, definitely. I like to torture some of my friends with it. <laughs> I just, right. I'll just, I'll just like go up behind them or something like that and start doing the voice. At BronyCon, one of my friends was working staff there, oh, and uh, we decided, or like, we decided we we're gonna try to do pranks as Bud mentioned, Sweetie while doing the voices, walking up behind people, and uh, we decided to prank my friend, and we kind of went up there and did a little banter like right there, and he was just kind of like, "Well played." <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. That's on video too. I'm eventually gonna post that up. Yeah, ah, you cool. get to see my face. Ah. <laughs> so I do remember that Joe mentioned something about you guys going to BronyCon. And this is your first BronyCon. You guys met up. Yeah, this is the first time we uh, got to meet up. This is my third time going to BronyCon, though. Ah. My first time going. Woo woo. <laughs> so how was that experience? Like meeting up and pranking people. It was really fun. I was really looking forward to meeting Joe because he's like basically my best friend. I was just like, yeah, we're going to meet. It's going to be fun. And it was like the best time I ever had at BronyCon. It was awesome. It's kind of funny. The first day to a message you and you're like, yeah, I can't wait to meet up. But then you fell asleep till like two. I know. (laughs) (laughs) So wait, you went into BronyCon late? Yeah. (laughs) She's like, I can't wait to go to BronyCon. I'm going to sleep through pretty much half of it. Basically. I, I think you missed out on the huge line con, so that's good. Oh, that's man. True. Oh, yes, yeah. it was con. definitely a line con. It, well, every year I, that I went to Brony Con, it was, it was line con 2014, 2015, and 2016. Oh, yeah. Line con, baby. Woo! <laughs> but to be fair, uh, a lot of fun things happen at line cons as well. Like when the line starts moving, people randomly bro you and things, oh, yeah. things start to that get happens. interesting. Yeah, yeah, but that then you're at Who's Lines at Anywhere. Remember when like people in line would like bro have each other at Who's Lines at yeah, Anywhere? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but then yeah, yeah. You, and then you sit there in the in the audience with red knuckles. <laughs> I know. Oh right? uh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. there's that one person that every time you pass by would like punch your hand. Mm. You'd be all like super bro <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that hurts. Not to mention, it's usually the same bunch of people because the line moves in the stink. Yeah. And you end up broken the same people. So if you didn't break your finger the first time around, they'd make sure the second time. Oh, well, definitely. You have five. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the other hand, you do have fingers. Oh, yes. True. <laughs> uh, so... Did you guys do anything at BronyCon with um, Button Mash and Sweetie Bell's adventure thingy? Other than pranking people? Well, no, because, like, um, remember we went into the arcade (laughs) and we were, like, bickering around in the arcade or something? Oh, yeah, we were were bickering when we were playing, like, a game of Call of Duty, I think it was. Yeah, they had, like, a bunch of, like, little stations set up. So we we, we decided to play. We were planning on recording, like, a live button match and Sweetie Bell thing there that I was going to post up, but it was so dang loud in that room, Mm. uh, we decided against it. But that did attract a few people, right? Maybe the occasional stare, like, what are those two doing over there? Yeah. (laughs) I think they've gone insane. (laughs) Most likely. We already have, Joe. You just got to admit it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I have gone insane. 
Yeah. I got I, all the editing. I, I went insane uh 2013 when I first joined the fandom. <laughs> I think everyone did. <laughs> I think we all are. Like what you guys been doing this for a while now, and I'm doing this show for four years, and I'm still on 700 subscribers. So yay! <laughs> oh, you'll get there. Hey man, four four years and doing a show that's that's it's pretty awesome, man. I I think I told you before that I actually did a I do a radio show. Mm, yeah, you did. Um, and I have been doing that since 2013, so I've been doing that for three years. Yeah, and well, it takes time, and we all do it not because of the popularity. We we just do it because we want to have a laugh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what it's all about. You do something to enjoy it. <laughs> yep. And you get to meet people, like, talking to you guys. Like, honestly, without this show, I don't think I'll have the chance to talk to you guys. Play games, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, but, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I do have a question regarding the um, CD Bell and Button Mash um, videos. What yeah. are your immediate future plans for it right now? Take it away, Joe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we, we are planning we are planning on doing um live stream of ask sweetie bell and button mash at some point we uh or specifically like on my channel i just well i've surpassed like four thousand subscribers already um and i'm already at 4300 just within like i gained 300 subscribers within like just a week wow which is kind of which is kind of insane <laughs> um yeah, now that I'm thinking of it, but we're, we're planning on doing a, yeah, an Ask a Button Mash and Sweetie Bell, um, live stream for the occasion of hitting 4,000 subscribers. And then I was, I was talking with Jed, I'm like, do you think you want to wait till 5,000? Cause this already went past pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna, uh, we're gonna plan on that at some point and just kind of party it out. It'd so. be fun. You guys should just do the 4K, and then after you finish your 4K, wait, well, we reach 5K. Okay, well, let's go for the 5K one, and so on. <laughs> yeah, pr- pretty much. Yeah, just yep. keep continuing from there. Yeah, it'll be like once a week, like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Gain 1K a week, huh? I'd be okay. With that. <laughs> That'd be pretty nice. <laughs> I think oh. anyone would love that. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing, really. Wow. So with Button Mash and Sweetie, like, has there been any other characters besides Sweetie Bell that you wanted to put in? Maybe like Button's mom. Let me think here. Like, there's been some ideas for like, like adding in different characters and stuff like that from the show. Um, well, there was there was an actual point in uh, there was the Agario video that we were recording that. Um, Jenna's mom was like doing stuff in the kitchen. <laughs> Blender, and right? It, it got, it got so loud and it was during the recording. I was like, at first in my head, I'm like, Oh crap, this is not good. I went to like scrap the recording because it's not going to sound good and stuff. But then I thought, I'm going to play off of that. <laughs> and, and I was like, you know, stop, you know, tell Rarity to stop. Stop like chopping those carrots and making those milkshakes in the background. Yeah. That was Which... really funny, by the way. That was that was genius. Rarity, I'm trying to record. <laughs> Tell her to stop. I can't. She's not chopping carrots. <laughs> I'm chopping carrots. You better give me that dang milkshake. Okie <laughs> dokie. Uh, but it it just it just like popped into that, and then after when I went back to like uh re- like you know editing stuff. I was like, wow, that actually worked well and it was funny and, um, I posted it up and that one is actually, I think that one's actually the most watched one out of all that. I think that's, I think that's yeah. 26,000 views 27. at this point. 27 now. Okay. So it went cool. up. <laughs> it's getting close to 30k. That's kind of insane. Holy crap. <laughs> there's that, but, um, other characters involved. Um, I've had other ideas for if it's a like Gmod or something or, other games that we could get more people on there that do different voices and stuff. I thought about getting the actual full CMC cast on there mm. and doing like a, just a random go around and play a bunch of different games, um, for like the occasional one or two. And then I thought, um, it would be kind of cool. I don't know if you guys watch the entire thing all the way through. I do have little after credit parts in my videos. So when it hits the, uh, 
uh, outro where you can click on my link to my channel or another video. If you wait a few seconds after that, I put clips for like bloopers yeah, or yeah, I, I, I watch those, yeah, <laughs> and stuff like that. And I thought about adding in after that maybe like if there was a point in the video where one of us like was extremely surprised or managed to dominate a person in a game a lot and something like that. That in the after credits, I would add in a character like maybe Gamer Luna <laughs> or Twilight or Rainbow Dash or whoever else would might might be playing a game at the time. And they're like complaining about what happened at that point <laughs> or is laughing at the fact that they just destroyed both of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, well, we're going to plan it out and stuff. So by by plan it out, we're gonna pretty much come up with the idea, the idea like five seconds before we record. <laughs> yeah, basically, how it goes. you know, procrastination at its best. Actually, yeah, I have the question that uh, initially you said that uh, you watched Vanna Madden's uh, Let's Play videos, and this was part of what inspired your Sweetie Bell Button Mash videos. Ever thought of actually asking to collab with Vanna? Has that thought ever occurred to you guys? Yes, it has. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, I, think I think she's busy. Yeah. Well, she's like so busy with like a bunch of her stuff, and uh, you know, we've. I, I I thought about sending a message and stuff, and seeing, uh, like maybe down the road that might happen or something like that. You know, crazy yeah. things have happened. We I got twenty thousand views on videos, which is something I never thought would ever happen in my life. Um, <laughs> so who knows? That might happen in the future. It may not happen in the future. The only time yeah. will tell. Well, yeah, yeah. We'll Honestly, yep. I would just say go for it. Like, just message her. If she doesn't read it, probably she's busy. And if she does, well, you guys have so you have goal there. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll see like a um, combination, or like a, that. That would be a collab right there, actually. If it yeah. ever happens. What am I actually to bomb Fluttershy playing? <laughs> oh wow, that, that would be fun. So <laughs> like, uh, Sweebo, uh, you decided to. Spend the night at Fluttershy's cottage for some. Or maybe she had to babysit Sweetie Belle. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe that. And then, uh, and then, and then, uh, like Fluttershy's like, oh, what are you playing? And then we'll be like playing like a very bloody gory game and she'll be like, ah! <laughs> well, she's seen worse on her own channel, so I'm sure yeah. she's fine. Oh, yeah. True. I do have one question. It's more related to general gaming. Uh, what are you guys' favorite game in general? Oh, it's really hard <laughs> because I I love games. Like games are my life. But um, <laughs> if I had to pick a favorite, probably console would be Little Big Planet on the PS3. LBP. Love that game. Yep. Uh, I have the first one, the second one, and the third one. I'm a huge fan of it. <laughs> and on PC, I probably think Tales from the Borderlands. Or Borderlands, like Borderlands 2, uh, Borderlands the pre-sequel, Tales from the Borderlands. Just Borderlands in general. Borderlands in general, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, um, what about you, Joe? Oh, man. That is an extremely tough question for me. Because <laughs> first off, I am a collector of games. I collect pretty much anything from console, NES, all the way back from when games started to pretty much newer games now. Um... But if I've had some pretty fond memories of a favorite game on console, it would probably be a game called Battle Tanks on the Nintendo 64. Yeah! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely loved those games. I played the... I, I literally would get up early. Like, when I was younger, I used to get up at, like, 6 a.m. a lot, <laughs> which is kind of insane for me now. That's surprising. Um, I would always have my one friend who told me that he wasn't surprised that I was a brony now. Um, he would, he would spend the night over and we would both get up at like 6 a.m. and we would pretty much play battle tanks until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh and, because, I don't know, it was just something like the campaign was fun, the multiplayer was fun. You know, you were in a tank, you were blowing things up. And, uh, which made it really fun. Um, and my, I guess my favorite game on PC because I've been playing it a lot ever since I've gotten, uh, my computer would probably be Team Fortress 2. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, I literally got over 800 hours into that yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Hat Simulator. Yes, Hat Simulator yep. since 2007. Wow. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> nice, nice. 
He's a great sniper. Um, I, I, I am a good sniper. You know, taught me. I did. I actually did spend time to teach you how to snipe. Yeah, it was in the orange map, but then I got, that was just a practice map, but I got addicted to tricks, like, playing normally in that map. Because it's, it's crits 24-7. Every, every oh, single hit is crits, so it makes it easier to, it makes it yeah. easier for you to kill other people, cause you, exactly. you you're too lazy to actually learn I don't, how to headshot. I don't have to worry, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know? I just That's gotta fun. aim, shoot, and they die. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you can just shoot the body and it's all crits and you be, it's fun. It, it's yeah. fast paced. <laughs> it, it, exactly. it, it is fun. It's just, and plus it's low gravity too, so when you shoot someone, they go flying halfway across the map. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Remember I got stuck to a wall once. <laughs> yep. So far you've made these guys play video games. Are there any plans to venture out into making these characters do other things, such as maybe uh, cover a song or read a story, things like that? Ooh. That would be fun. That that would be fun to do songs and stuff. Um, I would have to practice and get my voice yeah. in a position where I could sing. Because um, right now, if I were to attempt to sing anything, you guys like would end up with your ears bleeding. Would it sound kind of like? Would it sound kind of like um? I'm pushing that. <laughs> I think it would. I think it would sound like if uh, Shady Vox was a chain smoker. <laughs> Wait, I think Shady. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but he did manage to sing uh, "Don't Mind at Night." So yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he's a he's a good singer. He's he's like he he's a great voice actor and stuff. Mm-hmm. If you've seen a lot of the stuff he's actually voiced in, besides button mash and stuff, he's yeah. he's a great singer and great voice actor. Like he, his voice is conditioned to actually do all that kind of stuff. My voice is conditioned to just talk. <laughs> yeah, I think we all okay, need to practice. So, I think so if you basically, work on it, you yeah. Can get there. You guys need practice before you can ever venture into maybe something more. Basically, mm-hmm. basically that's it. I actually, um, uh, um, one of my uh, friends that I actually go got to visit out in New York. Um, she got to basically throw me through a small boot camp in voice acting, um, mm-hmm. like different ways to exercise your voice and stuff. And actually when I recorded my uh, button mash uh, voice reel that I have up on my channel, um, yes. she was kind enough to edit that and get it looking nice and professional uh, to get it up there. It kind of gave me an actual run. Cause, um, when, if I actually say something, my actual like career choice right now that I'm going through is a being a writer and a director on actual films and stuff. Ah, all right. Um, all right. So being on the actual acting side is a complete flip for me. <laughs> um, like, I'm used to telling actors and stuff, you know, okay, you, you kind of messed up here. Just kind of work on the area right here. You know, I want you to maybe be a little more excited. Um, kind of like going from the director side to the actor side, <laughs> which is – it's definitely an interesting flip to you. And I, and I really enjoyed, uh, you know, the experience and stuff. Um you know, I always, I always love like working on different projects and stuff, and actually having someone direct me or something. Um, and that gives me like, you know, obviously the um, experience that I need for when I'm actually directing actors in the future. I can be like, all right, I know how you feel because I've been in the same position. Um, I'll make sure to work it to you and make sure that everyone's comfortable. Yeah, I think if Tommy Wiseau could do it, you can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, totally. Over the head? No? Yeah. Oh. Uh, guys right. don't watch the room? <laughs> no, no, my name. Uh, you guys good at improv, like coming up with uh, voices on the spot? Alright, random voices on the spot? Um, let's say that, um, maybe if Norman were to throw you a, a situation, like, um, an argument between, uh, Button Mash and Sweetie Bell in, in a certain context, will you guys be able to pull it off on the spot? We can try. We can most <laughs> certainly try. <laughs> Hey, Norman, would you like to suggest? What, 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 <laughs> what, 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 I don't know. I wanted to say American politics, but no! I'm not sure American <laughs> politics. <laughs> we gotta build a wall. <laughs> oh, God, no, no, button, no, don't build walls. <laughs> no. That's not right, button. <laughs> oh man. No, no wall buildings. Uh, Only Trump can do that. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, I, I, was not expecting I got that. nothing. You got nothing. <laughs> I think I got one last from me because I, I think um, Jenna needs to be somewhere for a bit. So if my last question to you guys is, what are the criteria of games that you pick to do, well, 
the series? Is it supposed to be scary games, fun games, or just, uh, oh, this game is free. Why don't we play it? <laughs> um, right now it's, I guess it's just kind of like whatever we have in our Steam libraries. <laughs> yep. Um, but it's just kind of like whatever looks interesting and stuff like that. Um, any of the stuff that, or any of the money and stuff that I do make on my channel, I do put back into the series and stuff like that, which would be like getting the games and stuff for the series and all that kind of stuff. Like if there's something that's popular and stuff and it looks fun, um, like in the future, we're looking at playing uh, Dead by Daylight and uh, a few other games that are going to be coming out. Um, but stuff like that, stuff that's like popular, stuff that looks fun, and that looks fun because I I'm a huge fan of horror games. Um, I'm a scaredy cat. <laughs> and, Great match. And so I get to I get to torture Jenna in that game yep. if I'm the killer because I'm just going to completely ignore every single <laughs> other player in that and just go straight after Jenna. So, I'll let them all escape except for her. <laughs> oh, how, how thoughtful of you, Joe. <laughs> it's exactly what Button would do. <laughs> mm, yeah, most likely. Much fun to be had. Like, mm, there, there will be something awesome to, to see. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, thank you guys for coming onto the show. It, it's been great fun. I, I wish we had more time to talk, and then probably we, we could play Left 4 Dead. We have four people here, so it's perfect. But yeah, nobody's free. I'll so see if I can play it later. Yeah, probably. We'll see because the mods that we have, <laughs> the tag is called John Cena for a reason. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I, I downloaded that right away. Out of Norman's recommendation, yes, I downloaded it's good. It. John Cena. <laughs> Okay. Yep. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for coming on. So, um, where can they find you guys? Uh, you can find well, obviously the Bud Mash and Sweetie Bell stuff um, on my channel, which is your average Joe. Um, I also do have a Facebook page that you can look at. Uh, I also have Twitter. I have a DVR page. They're all on my channel too, so you can just go look that up. My channel's Jenna Bun. And I have a Facebook page, a DVNR, a Twitter, an AskFM, a Pinterest, and all the social media is linked on my channel, which you can check out. All right. And I also link to the links or the show notes. Uh, you can clearly tell that I'm not ready for this. It's what? Oh, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's okay. I'm never ready for any of my recordings. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. We usually like, okay, we're in a call and we're just like, you want to record? Okay. We start recording. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And usually it's 20 minutes of us figuring out how the heck we're going to record something, testing the mics, messing up a few times, and then, oh, okay, we're finally doing it. You want to tell them how we test the microphones? <laughs> Oh, oh, you mean how we sync it up? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we record our audio separate so I can obviously fix it and stuff. And to sync it up, I'm always like, all right, Jenna, I'm going to say bleep and you say bloop. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, bleep, bloop. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I try not to laugh after I said. I try to have like this serious face after I say bloop. <laughs> it's really hard though. It's serious recording time. Bleep I... bloop. Bloop. <laughs> uh, better than what I would have suggested. Like we do a countdown at the same time. That's gotta work, right? <laughs> uh, Skype like is fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, thank you guys, and I'll put everything into the show notes so people can watch you guys. So, awesome. thank you so much. Thank you for having mm -hmm. us on here. It was really fun. No problem. And be thank free you. to come on again because we have we had fun with you guys here. Like, bring on the chaos. That's what the show motto is. I'm good at bringing <laughs> chaos. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, back to the main show. Ah, oh, that was amazing, ain't it? Oh, sweet. I know. Like, oh, that ending there. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not, this is not really convincing, is it? I don't know, because I've not heard it, so I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, okay, <laughs> he's gone crazy again. That's good, Norman. You take your medical pills. <laughs> well, uh, for the people at home who have listened to this, and also future Steph who have listened to this, you will enjoy it, because Jenaban and... Past Steph has no idea. Future Steph will be lolling, going, oh, past <laughs> Steph, you silly Billy. <laughs> I know. Uh, this will be an interesting show, too. Uh, <laughs> or just edit out completely. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know what? Thank you for Just back to us. Yeah, th- thank you for listening to the interview. And well, on to the news, I say. And in today's news, cover reveal for the official My Little Pony pen and paper RPG entitled My Little Pony Tales of Equestria. Oh, that looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. I want to keep an eye on that one and actually do that. But it's a storytelling game because I like those things. Yep, yep. And this book is by River Horse Games. They're responsible for creating games like the Terminator Genesis tabletop game and Waterloo. Uh, I don't know how to say this. And The Hunt for Red October, one of those tabletop games. And well, they have recently acquired a license for the My Little Pony brand. And with that, they also had a cover. And this was in association with Amy Memberson. She helped River Horse create the cover. And this is a really awesome cover. It's a really standard RPG-based cover with your um, warrior, sorcerer, and rogue type of characters. And this book might be coming out somewhere around the end of this year, probably. It might be. It's saying something about 2017, but it's like, I know this uh, That's the con convention. Mm. Ah, okay. Still, um, I've seen the interview that a YouTube channel did with the guy who's managing director for River Horse, and his name is Alonso Cavatore. Is that how you say Cavatore? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go with that. <laughs> yep. So anyway, uh, Alonso here is a huge fan of the show. He watches it with his kids, and you can clearly tell he knows his stuff. And long story short, this is one of those introductions to new players are getting into D and D. You got your basic character creator sheet and whatnot, and this is one of those things where it's interesting in many points of view where. It's a pen and paper game, which I like participating in because it uses imagination and wordplay and mathematics to create your characters and whatnot. And also that Alonso here based it on his own experiences for D&Ds. And some of his past works have been the Warhammer 40k, the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game, King of War, ball action, and many more. So I am interested in what he's going to do with this one. Indeed, indeed. That'll be good, though. And other than that, I don't know what to say more because <laughs> it's pen and paper RPG, so probably we'll have a session here. Maybe? I don't know. It's like pen and paper RPG just sounds awesome, but every time I see those sort of things and I want to play, I just think, like, oh, I can draw my own character! Excuse to draw our character! Yay! And, yep, and he even mentioned that in his interview where... Um, there's four character sheets. You got your basic Pegasus, Unicorn, and Earth Pony character sheets where those bases are drawn for you. Or if you're the creative type, you can draw your own characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Draw my own characters. Draw my own characters. <laughs> it looks so pretty on the cover as well. It's just like, oh, so many ideas. I really like the warrior with his mane as well. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one. I I can't wait for this game to come out and buy it. Like, I hope it's available for me to get it, because if not... uh... I'm like, anyway, you know how you're not really a fan of tabletop games? Do you want to play Tales of Equestria? (laughs) I'm sure she will. We can draw our own pony characters. Yay! (laughs) Yeah. Oh, she could do a business. Like, um, print out the empty character sheets and do commissions. Yes! Oh, business idea. Yay. <gasps> that would be fun. I don't know if she would do it, but it would be fun. Yeah. Um, one thing I need to mention beforehand is that um, Hasbro owns Wizards of the Coast. And Wizards of the Coast also does D&D or Dungeons & Dragons. And Dungeons & Dragons is another pen and paper... It is the tabletop game. <laughs> yes, it is the tabletop game. And I'm just wondering, why didn't they send it to, well, Wizards to create this, like create a D&D game out of this. And then it hit me. Hasbro likes to license out their products because if you remember the My Little Pony uh, collectible card games, they send it to Enterplay and yeah, (laughs) not in-house from Wizards too because they also own Magic the Gathering. See where I'm going here? (laughs) Ah, I see where you're going. Yeah, it's kind of strange but it's not 
an unusual occurrence for them. You know, it's smart because getting more money. Yep, yep. That's the name of the game. Mm-hmm. And also, um, talking about money, Sony has started revoking. Well, previously they were content IDing um, content creators on the YouTube for remixes, but they started pulling that away now. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because this happened before, way back when, when uh, one of the albums came out. I forgot what was the album. Uh, YouTube content ID started claiming those remixes and whatnot but slowly they're revoking it because well it's remix um, by law you can do that i'm not 100 sure but if you created something new out of uh, existing content it's considered better i don't know legal uh. I, I would say it's considered legal but don't quote me on that because i'm not well versed on the law and i've not i'm not content created to actually sell so i don't know the rules in it with the release of the Pinkie Pie album, which includes a lot of good songs like I Fly, that was what, the Rainbow Dash, uh, Thanks for the Memory song, and also the Pinkie Pride song, those were few in there with Weird L, those were good. Uh, with that album releasing, uh, Sony's ID Robot kind of content ID everything, and slowly they're revoking it, because sometimes on YouTube there's a lot of people who upload raw songs onto there like without remixing it and that's a big no-no because um you can hear those officially on the my little pony youtube website so you don't really need third parties to do it for you it's like yeah that's fair news yeah but still um if they're revoking those content id so that's good because we don't need drama like that no more drama yeah no more drama llama the world has plenty drama true that more drama llama Ring-a-ling-a-ding-dong on YouTube. Yeah. And talking about drama, have you seen Suicide Squad? <laughs> no, I have not, Norman. <laughs> oh, some people do not like that movie. I've heard a lot of people do not like that movie. I forgot to say to Amy, hey, yo, do you want to go see it? But then it's like, oh, yeah, I'm busy this weekend. So <laughs> we know see it. But a lot of people really do not like it. I kind of do. I can see why people don't, but... Eh, sh- um, it's one of those personal taste kind of things. Is it a going against the franchise kind of things, and that's why everyone's super butt hurt? Not really. To me, for my personal reasons, is it's an ensemble piece where each character should have their own spotlight moment. But in this one, nah, they didn't. They didn't get that moment. Was it all taken up with Harley Quinn? Harley Quinn and that shot. Ah, uh, that shot. But that shot's cool. Yeah, that's the problem there because they're focusing on one character or a few characters instead of they're, they're focusing on the cool people that the popular people rather than the everyone yeah if you remember avengers like thor and hulk had their moment iron man had his moment captain america had his moment uh, black widow and hawkeye too so everybody had their moment and this one not really but anyway that's a different story for another day the only reason why i'm bringing this up is another kind of words yeah. <laughs> The only reason why I'm bringing this up is because of Captain Boomerang. Oh my. Yep. Captain Boomerang has, well, apparently (laughs) he's a brony in that universe. And the funny thing is that he has a pink unicorn he calls Pinky. Oh yes. During an interview, uh, director for Suicide Squad, David Ayer, Ayer, David Ayer uh, mentioned that the unicorn piece was kind of a background prop that kind of showed itself and they wanted to have Captain Boomerang have a personality and his exact word was Pinky was actually intended to be a piece of set decoration in our office building set. I thought Boomerang needed a little something kind of fun and silly and it kept appearing throughout the film. It became a bit of a mascot. Yes, he's a brony, which is fine. I think it's a good thing and gives him a little hobby besides robbing banks. Which is always good. It's good to have hobbies. So, yeah. (laughs) Captain Boomerang is a brony. So is Deadpool. It's like Deadpool is just an appreciator of unicorns like myself. Yes. (laughs) Oh, rarity. It's like a rare opponent. Yes. 
<laughs> but still, uh, those are the new... Unicorns are, ma- are magical and awesome, and everyone should love them anyway, whether they're brony or not, because unicorns for the win. Yeah, have you seen The Last Unicorn? That movie was good. I love The Last Unicorn. That was one of my favorites as a kid. The art style as well. Oh, the meshing of two art styles, oh, American yeah. and Japanese animation. Just, mm. That was that was just mm, very, very... Mm. Mm. But also, have you played Robot Unicorn Attack? Of course I have. One and two. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I love them both. And I love that song that they had originally in there, as yours, always. The newer one, you would go to the Fire Planet and then you got Blind Guardian oh. playing as well in the background. That's where I first heard it. I was like, oh, <laughs> epic. I know. That was just... Mm. <laughs> love it. What are the unicorn products are out there? I'm trying to think, like, other than the mountains of plush, rainbows that come out of butts. <laughs> um, oh. I, I, my mind has just gone blank. I just off, When I think of unicorns, just rainbow poop. <laughs> just, yay! Rainbow fart through the sky! <laughs> well, Woo! National animal of Scotland! Yeah! Fart rainbows! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bringing it back to D&D, there's a unicorn in uh, D&D too, so yay! There's got to be a unicorn in near enough any RPG or yeah, fantasy yeah, setting. True. If you don't have a unicorn, your game is broken. <laughs> I don't 100% agree, but still. Your game is broken if you don't have a unicorn! <laughs> wow, Matt Steph is mad. This is a very passionate Steph, is very passionate. Yes, indeed. Especially when it comes to unicorns. <laughs> uh, Everyone in this area knows this. You will learn to. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> With that, that ends the news and also this episode. Thank you for coming on and listening to us. It's something new and different, I know. It's really strange. Oh, fun fact. I kind of derp on the recording for the interview. If you notice my voice is not the same as this one, that's because I did a (laughs) boo-boo. After four years of recording, and now you do the boo-boo. Oh, you should listen to Dr. Wolf one. That was the second take. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to go look for that one now. Yeah. But anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can email us at the MBS Show. Also, you can reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. And as for me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about it twice food and whatever tickles my fancy usually linking it with instagram yay yay instagram <laughs> and steph what about you ah uh, you can find me at lurkercat.deviantart.com i almost forgot the link there i was like <laughs> la, la, la. and you can also give highland bronies a look on facebook which is facebook.com forward slash highland bronies awesome give them loves they likes the loves yes and i happen to be kicking about somewhere so yeah <laughs> <laughs> and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. And also please subscribe to our newest show, the MBS Show Reviews, where Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, and myself review the My Little Pony episodes and comics. Over there you get to see a different side of, well, Silver Quill and Sapphire as they kind of run amok and frenzy towards the show. It's really crazy. Old man joke and a lot of... Nah, just nah. How do you survive, Norman? I don't know. This is the better question. How? How are you still here? How are you still sane? Are you still sane? <laughs> well, um, look, the better question is, don't ask why. Ask why not. The most dangerous question of all. Indeed. Why not? <laughs> That's why I'm not allowed in certain places now, <laughs> thanks to that question. <laughs> uh, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Lurker Cat. And we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Bye bye.